This video shows how to enter general project data for a new project in RHVAC. First, we want to create a new project, which will be a copy of the Autoload 1 project we created earlier in the Using an Autoload project video. Click the New Project button in the toolbar. As always, the very first thing you should do after starting a new project is to save it. Doing so makes it so virtually all the data you enter can be recovered even if something bad happens, such as your computer crashing or the program encountering a fatal error. If you choose to enter data while the main Windows caption still says Untitled, you run the risk of losing all your work in the project. Click Save Project in the toolbar to save the project. We'll name this project Jones Residence. Click the Save button. Let's also enter Jones Residence in the project title input. This text will show up in several places in various reports. Since we blanked out the date input in our Autoload 1 project, today's date has been inserted here. If the text is blank, RHVC automatically inserts today's date. If we want to reinsert today's date, there's a special way to do that. First, delete all the text, and then press the backspace key. We just deleted all the text. Next, we'll press the backspace key to insert today's date. The second part of the building orientation comment input lets you choose which of eight directions the front door faces. The option does not affect any calculations. It only controls the text that is displayed on various reports such as the building rotation report. Let's change the direction to southeast. Click the client tab so we can enter some information about the homeowners. Now let's click the Company tab to confirm that the company information we entered in the Autoload 1 project is still there. Now let's click the Design Conditions tab so we can see if there is anything we want to change for the current project that is different from our default data. The daily range, latitude, and elevation inputs were all inserted when we selected the city. You almost never need to change these values. The elevation derating inputs each default to being 1. If your project is at an altitude of at least 2,000 feet, you can either do your own derating when you're selecting equipment, or you can use these inputs to let the program do the derating. It's probably better to leave these inputs at 1 and do your own derating when you select equipment, especially if your manufacturer's performance data includes its own rules for derating equipment due to high elevation. Note that the program's calculations related to airflow are independent of these inputs. The program will automatically adjust your supply CFM to be appropriate for your project's elevation even if you leave these values at 1. When you selected the reference city, RHVAC automatically inserted the temperatures for that city. For most cities in the U.S. and Canada, these temperatures are from Manual J. The inputs are editable if you need to change them. For example, a local county agency may require that you use a certain summer outdoor dry bulb temperature for load calculations in your area. Usually, though, there is no need to change these values. The winter wet bulb temperature is only important if you're going to be doing humidification in the winter. You can specify that on the system data window later. And need to know the winter humidification load. Otherwise, you can ignore this input. Manual J recommends 230 and 200 BTUH for sensible and latent people loads. For non-residential applications, you can click the drop-down help button beside one of these inputs to choose from a list of values from the ASHRAE Handbook of Fundamentals. Click the button again to close the drop-down help window. Now click the duct sizing tab. Notice the caption of the frame holding the inputs on the left. It says built-in duct sizing. That means that these inputs only apply to the automatic built-in duct sizing that RHVAC can do for runouts and main trunks. 
These inputs do not apply to the tabular manual deduct size window or to the graphic manual deduct size component. There are three kinds of duct sizing available in RHVAC. The first is built in. Runout and main trunk sizes are calculated from the inputs you enter on general project data. The second is the tabular manual deduct size window. Using this project window, anything from just a single duct size to the sizes for an entire duct system can be calculated. It also calculates static pressure losses. The third kind is with graphic manual deduct size. This separately licensed component works in drawing board to let you draw a complete duct system on top of the rooms you drew for the load calculation. It calculates both duct sizes and pressure losses. You can select from a list of roughness factors for various duct materials or enter your own factor. You can also enter a desired pressure drop per 100 feet. Entering minimum and maximum velocity values will prevent your ducts from being too big or too small. The minimum and maximum height inputs let you specify the allowed range of sizes. The shape inputs let you specify the ducts as either round or rectangular. It's common for the main trunk shape to be rectangular and the runout shapes to be round. The CFM per runout input lets you specify the target amount of supply airflow that the program will use in determining the number of registers to assign to each room. This input will be applied only to rooms that have zero entered for the registers input. The common schedule can apply to all three kinds of RHVAC duct sizing. The sizes in these boxes represent either diameters for round ducts or widths for rectangular ducts. The schedule is used only when you specify that it should be. For built-in duct sizing, you must select Yes in the Use Schedule inputs. For ducts sized with manual deduct size or the tabular manual deduct size window, you must specify the sizing method as being Schedule. Thanks for watching.